Hello everyone and welcome back to round 3 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we return this weekend out here in the land down under Albert Park, Australia. Of course, yeah, round 3 of the all new season. If you missed out on the videos that went live yesterday, what are you doing? Go back uh, and check them out, of course. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, both two very, very different but very, very interesting Grand Prix uh, to kick off the campaign. And of course, we're back today. We're going to be jumping in it and once again doing another double episode, of course. We're going to be doing daily F123 My Team until we win that World Championship. So yeah, definitely if you're new around here, want to get yourself subscribed as well. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you uh, for the support so far on this series. Championship-wise, though, of course, opening couple of races have been quite tough there. Still sat in P19 overall in the championship, just behind our teammate Enzo Fittipaldi there. Um, obviously, Australia and Azerbaijan this weekend. Max Verstappen leading the way ahead of Carlos Sainz. But yeah, Ferrari with a win on the board already uh, this season has been less predictable than real-life Formula 1. But yeah, heading, though, to Albert Park. I'm hoping, of course, again, this should be a track that suits our car a bit more, just like Saudi Arabia did, but you never know. We'll wait and see. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I must admit, I always like coming back to Albert Park, Australia. Another tough test against the AI, of course. But yeah, fun track that I've always loved as well, of course. After those opening two races in the Middle East, now is a bit of a time, you know, to sort of sit back. Or not quite sit back, but reflect and work out, of course, where the direction of the car needs to go early on this season. Of course, the opening four Grand Prix, all very, very high-speed circuits. It's only really Miami. Uh, where we start to get a much better test of the downfalls of the car. And then, of course, we've got Miami, Imola, Monaco, and Barcelona. So, yeah, we go from four very, very high-speed circuits to four very, very low-speed circuits, uh, one straight after the other. So, yeah, we'll wait and see as to how competitive the car is early on this season. Of course, the best way to make it more competitive, though, as always, is to pick up R&D points there, as DRS now, obviously, are a long part of this back straight here in Albert Park, which is obviously really good for us as well. But yeah, the plan of action today, though, of course, uh, two more episodes of my team today. We've got Breaking Point as well coming out later on. Of course, we're going to be doing Daily Breaking Point until we finish off that game mode as well. Uh, and then hopefully as well this evening, the first round of the Williams Road to Glory highlights will be dropping as well. We're going to be live over on Twitch as well at 7 p.m. UK time if you want to check out round two of the Williams Road to Glory 100% races. We're heading to Saudi Arabia in that series. But there we go then. First lap here from Albert Park. Track climatization. Almost perfect there. All purples and just two green scores. Right, next up then, tyre wear simulation run. Of course, tyre wear, but definitely still trying to learn the nuances of that inside F123. Um, yeah, definitely feels like it's a lot less linear than it has been in previous games. But... As long as we can get a purple score, that's kind of the most important thing. It's always this final sector here at Albert Park. I struggle to match up against the Delta with three tenths up at the moment. So we wind our way through, actually. Getting a little bit of time there, but the penultimate corner, one of the toughest, actually weirdly difficult, these final two corners here in Albert Park. But round in the end of our final lap then, or first lap even, I should say, that is going to be the green score, almost purple. Is a game of cat and mouse against the Delta here, but out of the final corner, come on, we can do this. So, so close. We head up to the line, just about clutched it up there. That is going to be two purple scores so far. And we're a long way off George Russell. And last up then is going to be our race simulation run. These are either really easy or near impossible so far from what I've learned on F123. So let's hope it's the former rather than the latter. Round our way through the final corner, though these medium tyres are starting to feel a little bit second-hand, but up towards the start-finish line, it is going to be three for three on the purple scores here. Fantastic start to the weekend. Hopefully, we can maintain that form into qualifying. Out 
absolutely love to make it into Q2 for the first time this season, but Albert Park historically has not been my best track in terms of one lap pace. So I'm not going to hold my breath and say it's a guarantee, uh, but as always, we're going to absolutely give it everything there. As I think Fittipaldi behind me is just coming to the end of his first lap, so hopefully we're going to be able to sort of see what benchmark our teammate sets. 18.6 by Sergio Perez, though. Uh... Oh, hey, I've done a Sergio Perez there down at turn three. Still getting used to the brakes, so that is his first lap. Probably a write-off, but we may as well have completed anyway. Shame, apart from that one mistake, this lap's actually been fairly hooked up for the most part, but we know there's going to be more and more time to find track evolution. Seems to be an even bigger thing on F123 over F122, rounding our way through the final couple of corners. What is the time going to be? Charles Leclerc, 18 4 fastest at the moment. That's already gone. We're going to set a 20.7 there. Only good enough for P10. Uh, and I, I think that's the nice way of putting last of the current runners. I tell you what, though. One minute left on the clock. Fittipaldi only up in P19. They're about four tenths faster, but everyone is out for another run, okay, apart from one, one of the Red Bulls remaining, and the Mercedes. We need about another six, seven tenths at the moment if we want to make it into Q2, but I'm sure times by the AI are going to continue to improve as well, so let's just drive fast and see what we can do there. A little bit of front locking down at turn one, but we get a nice run on the exit of the corner. Actually, about half tenth down there, so clearly wasn't as brave as I'd originally thought. Caden straight our way into turn three, and now we should be up on the delta, and hopefully we can just carry the speed. We're on the final run, Mark. Oh, that's horrible. That is absolutely horrible. Rally crossing our way through turn five. We managed to keep our foot in, though. And we're still... How are we... With three quarters of a second up, so we must have lost a lot more time in that first second than I thought I had. So it was a good job we didn't abandon this run already, then. Fittipaldi momentarily gets jumped by Magnussen, but immediately pushes himself back up ahead of the Haskar. So we make our way through the fast. S is there. Got to be so, so careful on the throttle. Still about seven tenths up at the moment. Logan Sargent on a 19.7... That is not good enough for him to make it into Q2, but can we continue just to find a little bit more time as we wind our way through these final couple of turns? Try and be brave, but also don't allow any mistakes. Got to be so, so tidy through these final couple of turns. Where are we going to be then on the grid? Ready for the Australian Grand Prix. They've found another tenth through the final couple of corners. Fittipaldi on the back row. And I think we've joined him. 19.8 there is only good enough for P21. Well, there we go. Sergio Perez fastest on a 17.8 there. Three tenths clear of Fernando Alonso at the end of first running. So very, very competitive lap time by the Aston Martin. But yeah, Nico Hulkenberg, both Williams, uh, Nick De Vries, myself and Enzo Fittipaldi then out in Q1 there. Fair chunk of time away from Nico Hulkenberg as well. 19.2. We were six tenths away from making it into Q2 there. Again, I feel like if we'd absolutely nailed the lap, we could have been close. I reckon we could have been ahead of Albon. But we're starting right towards the back then. We are 2-1 up, though, on Enzo Fittipaldi in qualifying. Let's try and make sure we beat him in the race and hope for a bit of a miracle. Well, once upon a time, this used to be the season opener before it fell victim to a pandemic reshuffling. But now Albert Park is back at the heart of the F1 calendar. So welcome to Sunkissed Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 14 corners and 3.28 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles per hour. Close proximity of the barriers make accidents inevitable. Recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday and it's put him on pole and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Perez, Hamilton, Russell, Ocon, Norris, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Magnussen, Sonoda, Joe, Oscar Piastri, Hulkenberg, Albon, Bottas, Sargent, Stroll, Mr. Monaco, Fittipaldi, Mr. Monaco. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. 
And a warm welcome, of course, to my co-commentator here today. It's Natalie Pinkham. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? What a quality performance. The big question, though, is how does that translate on race day? Can they hold on to that lead? One more thing to consider is the strategy element. How far can the drivers push these tyres? And who is going to blink first for fresh rubber? It'll be interesting to see if the leaders have to compromise their plan to cover off the cars behind them. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Mark has got some faith in me this weekend, lining up P20 for the Australian Grand Prix, and it looks like strategy is going to be a lot less brave here. Mediums to hards once again. The soft medium did work well in Saudi Arabia, but yeah, this track very, very traction limited, so it is going to be a tough test. Some grid penalties as well for other cars around me. Lance Stroll uh, and Nick De Vries there are the two notable ones. Valtteri Bottas as well, not far in front with some penalties. So a mixed-up grid. How will that affect things today as Charles Leclerc leads the grid on this formation lap. All right, well, we haven't started in the same grid position yet twice on F123. Maybe P20 is going to be our lucky position for a good race today. Not convinced we're going to score points here, but you never quite know. Um, just, just went over the red line there as we get ready then for the start of the Australian Grand Prix. Five red lights. Again, a ridiculously long hole, but it is lights out. Oh, and away we don't really go. We managed to save it a little bit on the second phase of the launch. There is lots of Constantina and up in front as we head down in towards Turn 1. Alba Park, the scene of many big incidents. Slap 1, Turn 1, but it looks like everyone has back made it through. Nick De Vries, I'm going to get squeezed out on the exit there. Esteban Ockham, Pierre Gasly style from the Real Grand Prix. Svitopaldi trying to look down the inside of as many cars as he possibly can. We'll try and go back around the outside of Nick there, and you know what, we'll get back around the outside of Enzo as well, so happy that we've been able to hang on there as Lance Stroll, Valtteri Bottas, arguably two of Formula 1's weaker wheel-to-wheel -wheel drivers, just coming together then in a brief moment, as yeah, you definitely, I'm so used to carrying a lot of speed through that corner that you definitely can't quite do that in the absolute toaster oven that is the F123 car. At the moment there as we wind our way though through at the middle sector. Looks like Charles Leclerc's hung on to the lead at the start of this one. Could we get our third winner in three Grand Prix there? As again running just a little bit wide as we try and head out in towards the final sector there. Fittipaldi again trying to look potentially down the inside. We break very, very late, but we get the car slowed down. Down at the end of the back straight there. Turn 11 and now, yeah, Stroll and Bottas still duking it out just in front of us but yeah pretty clean start then here from Albert Park looks like the top two have been able to break away ever so slightly now like we said Charles Leclerc leads the way at the end of lap one so clearly Red Bull aren't going to have it all their own way early on this season but we just got to try and hang close to Stroll and Bottas we know how quick that Aston Martin can be um d depends on whose hands it's in however Bottas trying to look around the outside of Logan Sargent then so clearly some of these slightly faster cars Already then looking to try and shuffle their way up there as Sergeant not really putting up much of a fight. Unfortunately for us though, Lance Stroll just seems to want to watch and have a picnic behind the Williams at the moment. As Perez, yep, trading fast as laps at the front. So it's Max Verstappen then uh, that's actually down in P3. We kind of just always assume it's the Dutchman at the front of the field. Looks like he's broke free from the Mercs as Carlos Sainz must have had a nightmare. Here goes Stroll though, down the inside of Logan Sargent at Turn 1. Whoa! Tried to get on the throttle nice and early on the exit there. Fittipaldi almost runs into the back of myself, but we really want to capitalise. But no opportunity that time. And now here goes Lance Stroll. Oh, that was close between him and Logan Sargent. Then to the outside, down at turn 11 there. Sargent trying to get his elbows out, but you know what? Stroll will get right around the outside of him. And I don't really want to sit behind Logan all too long this afternoon. We might just watch Stroll now try and break away ever so slightly. We might see Sergeant being able to hang on to his coattails for at least a couple of laps, but either way I do not want to get caught out behind the Williams here. I definitely feel like we have got a little bit of better race pace than him. Continue, he's on soft compound tyres as well, so he's probably going to struggle early, uh, sorry, in the next few laps then. But yeah, Sergeant always going with the alternate strategy in these Grand Prix, so anything you can do, Williams want to do differently. Come on, then. This has got to be the run on Logan Sargent. The AI definitely don't use as much battery down this back straight. Either that or Sargent's just used a bit too much early on this afternoon as he'll give me a squeeze, but we'll make it through. Luckily, we'll still be in the DRS range of Strulovic. 
So let's try and hang close to Lance and see if he can drag us up the order a bit. Homeboy, Oscar Piastri battling it out with Nico Hulkenberg just in front, and this is allowing me just to hang a little bit closer there. As you can see, Stroll and Bottas once again just sat having to wait in the wings, but yeah, pace so far. Whoa, early on here. Hang on to it. <laughs> I love how much you can throw the cars around on this game. I mean, we've luckily, I think we had knocked Sergeant out of the DRS range, uh, which was very, very helpful as well. So hopefully we won't have to focus on our mirrors all too much. But yeah, Piastri and Hulkenberg still clearly trying to dispute P15 here. It's definitely not the line over that curbing either. There goes the Australian to the outside of Nico Hulkenberg as we get down towards the end of the back straight. Bottas as well, a little bit of a mistake as well. So everyone will just have to sit in there as Piastri's only gone and done it around the outside and Nico Hulkenberg, but those cars in front are pulling away. Pass this time around to the outside of Nico, but I can't help but feel like I'm hanging on to these cars, but I'm kind of a bit scared to go for anything just in case we then lose some of them. Definitely have not got the pace. I mean, these are some decent midfield machinery in front of me. Looks like Yuki Sonoda and Alex Albon have absolutely tried to take the opportunity to run away in front of them. Um, but yeah, we, we, I think we've just got to be really, really patient early on in this race and sort of see if it can come to us. But it's so, so difficult. You just want to get in the fight. That's good to know, though. Sargent's still struggling. Is Fittipaldi stuck battling the Williams? So yeah, we, we can afford just to sit here and just wait and see if the race comes to us. I think Bottas is trying now to make moves on Oscar Piastri at the front of this train. Saw him just duck out the slipstream for one brief moment. As that is very, very wide on the way in. And very, very wide on the exit to match it out there. Bottas now to the outside of Oscar Piastri. How many times have we seen them trying to make moves down here on each other so far? And is Bottas going to be able to hook it up? Might just be able to. That round the outside he'll go. Piastri, though, going to try and keep the nose on the inside. Just be careful. The Constantina and up. Oh, it's a pass on the grass on Lance Stroll. Somehow we get it slowed down there. Nudge the wall on the way through, but I think we'll get away with it without any front wing damage. Let's just have a look to confirm. Yeah, no front wing damage on that one as well. So it must have been tire face on the barrier, but that is definitely one of the more adventurous overtakes I'll make on this game. Oh, Hulkenberg this time around to the outside of Piastri. I think Piastri wanted to try and find a run. Around the outside of Valtteri Bottas there, but now Oscar, yeah, really is starting to shuffle backwards in this gaggle of cars. Oh, we just nick the grass on the way, and that's going to upset the rhythm. Sorry, Lance. Just going to have to squeeze you out there, mate. Oh, Oscar Piastri into the pit lane, though, at just the end of lap nine. So really is struggling for his tyres, but unfortunately all of that going on might just have dropped us out of the range of Nico Hulkenberg in this race. So we might have to let Oscar back by. Probably is, sorry, uh, Lance even back past. So then he can try and close up to those two in front again. Let's see, we got, I'm going to get a say on the matter. Lance Stroll clean around the outside, he'll go. And yeah, now, again, we've just got to sit back. This is the problem when you're battling much faster cars than your own. You've really got to play to the strategy. Oh, yellow's out. Someone's got issues in this race. It looks to be the Williams of Alex Albon. So more Mercedes power unit troubles early on this season. Of course, we saw McLaren having problems with them. And that's going to help me out nicely because Bottas, Hulkenberg and Stroll all slow down to avoid him. But Alex Albon, our first casualty then of the Australian Grand Prix. But doesn't look like we're going to get a safety car. Oh, Stroll and Hulkenberg, they both had the same idea to the outside of Bottas. And the end of the back straight. Again, it seems like actually being on the outside there is really working for the AI. Hulkenberg then will make it through. But into the lofty heights of P17 at the moment. Oh, uh, nope, that's still Alex Albon. And I thought that was one of the front runners with issues. But no, it was just the stricken Williams still. They're starting to see more cars peel into the pit lane then. Fernando Alonso, one of the first to blink. The uh, we're top probably going to be boxing. Well done. Let's try and get past in the DRS zone. Yeah, we might try that. Or I might actually try and get a bit of an undercut on these three. I'm tempted to box now at the end of this lap. And how many times have I said this so far, though? Bottas to the outside of oh, Hulkenberg. It's oh, Kevin Magnussen suddenly drops out of the Grand Prix there. So our second mechanical failure of the day in quick concession. And yeah, there we go. Magnussen pulling off to the inside there. And I just realised this is a really dumb move on Stroll because I got a pit. Nope, luckily we get away with it. Bottas peeling into the pit lane as well then. So we're not really going to be able to test the undercut on Valtteri. Oh! <laughs> 49 
on pit entry then. I thought that was going to be my first pit lane speeding penalty uh, of F123. But we get away with it. Hopefully, we're going to be able to stay close to Bottas as well as we get back out onto the circuit. Come on, let me go. There we go. Right out behind the Alfa Romeo. So let's just try and hang with him. I reckon this Alfa could be fast. And we might be able to undercut Hulkenberg and Lance. There we go. A little more cars into the pit lane, but I don't think too many that we're concerned about at the moment, unless we can get an even larger undercut than I'd originally anticipated. No, there is Lance Stroll. So it looks like we're going to get the jump on Stroll. There's Nico Hulkenberg as well, heading out of pit lane. And in fact, Joe Grant News right there. Swoop right on the outside of Nico. Bottas might now be able to get a run on his teammate out of Turn 1 there. And that's actually, yeah, worked out really nicely for us. Stroll a long way back. Hulkenberg likely won't get the DRS either as we watch these two Alfa Romeos dispute P15. Um, still got a couple more cars that need to pit. Fittipaldi and uh, Nick De Vries there. Probably the notable two. So, yeah, we could actually be up in a decent position here at the moment. There we go. Fittipaldi into okay, the pit lane as well then. Stop. So, that's going to be another freebie. And I think Nick De Vries has. Nick De Vries joined him? No, he, yes, he has. Sorry. So, back into P15 we'll go then here in Albert Park, but now just trying to hang on to the Alfa Romeos at the moment. I think, you know, in the final 10 laps, we're really going to start going aggressive here and sort of seeing what they're capable of. And here we go then, another one. Bottas this time around to the outside of his teammate, Joe Guanyu, really hoping they don't slow each other down too much. So, you know what, we'll try and follow him around the outside of Joe. Are we going to be able to find the grip there? This is working nicely for Bottas. We'll try and keep... Oh, it's very, very close to contact, but we'll make it past Zhou Guan Yu. Maybe we can leave him battling with Nico Hulkenberg behind us. But stay in the DRS range of Bottas. We have to hang on. Oh, okay. Oscar Piastri into the pit lane then as we start lap 20. I was literally just to say how much time we've been gaining on the Australian there. We're literally just sitting behind Bottas, letting him do all the hard work at the moment. And just taking the DRS every opportunity. So here comes Zhou Guan Yu down the inside. This was not quite part of the plan from the second Alfa Romeo car. Don't let Bottas get away. Because, uh, yeah, this was working out really nicely for me. And suddenly now, it might not anymore. Bottas, the gap opens up nine and a half tenths. We have to try and stay close through the DRS zone. I don't know if we did or not. Come on, please say we're still in the range of Valtteri Bottas. Yes, we are. That is so, so close. That must have been thousands of a second in it. Uh, but yeah, clearly we've still got to be careful of Zhou Guan Yu late on in the day. But Bottas, I mean, the pace is looking really good at the moment. Maybe he could drag us up towards Yuki Tsunoda. Oh, I think Zhou Guan Yu's got issues. Zhou Guan Yu suddenly dropping back on lap 22 there. Hulkenberg's been able to complete the move. And maybe just a mistake then from the Alfa Romeo. But that's given me a bit more breathing room again from the cars behind, which is nice. If they can just battle each other... I just, I think basically the plan is wait behind Bottas until the final lap and then jump him. I don't think, yeah, he's losing time to Yuki up the road. There we go. Confirmation then. Joe Guan Yu has got issues late on in the day. Whoa. Our tyres definitely starting to go off as well then. Make sure we don't get Hulkenberg back in the range. Uh, but yeah, Joe Guan Yu clearly has picked up some mechanical fault. I have completely forgot about someone else still in this race late on, and that is, of course, Lance Stroll has moved now past Nico Hulkenberg here and clearly has remembered his Aston Martin this year is a lot more competitive than the 2022 car. So we need to try and make sure that we're covering that gap towards the end of this race. Maybe it'll be about trying to put Bottas between myself and the Canadian before the final lap. Because at the moment, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm able to get to Bottas. But I don't really think, you know, if I do it before the last lap, he's just going to get back past me. So patience is a virtue. Oh, that's perfect. Stroll and Hulkenberg again, battling it out a bit further behind me. Of course, the two-time teammates in Formula 1 back in 2020 for the British Grand Prix. But, yeah, Bottas still just hanging on in front of me. It is going to be all or nothing on the final lap against him. Do feel a little bit bad, the fact that we've stuck behind him all day, pretty much using him, dragging us along, as Piastri now gets past Sir Lance as well. But yeah, it is going to be a last lap cheeky style, hopefully, cheeky style overtake. Around the final corners then to start the last lap then here from Albert Park. Looks like Charles Leclerc, just like he managed in 2022, is going to hang on to win the Australian Grand Prix here in Albert Park. I don't quite know if it's going to be a Grand Slam this time. 
But another dominant display there. And our third winner in the opening three Grand Prix as well. Ferrari. I mean, we, we spoke about Red Bull after the Bahrain, how dominant they looked. But since then, it has been the Ferrari show early on this year. Maybe some of their battles can continue from 2022. But we're just trying to make sure that we're hanging close still to Bottas on this final lap. They're really now pushing their limits okay, of what this car and circuit are capable of. Charles Leclerc wins the Australian Grand Prix here at Albert Park. But are we now going to be able to try and put my plan to full effect here? Definitely was never going to close up to Yuki Tsunoda. The pace of that Alpha Tauri far too strong this afternoon. But look at the speed to the outside of Valtteri Bottas will go. And we make it through and up into P12 then of the Grand Prix there. A little bit of a mistake on the exit. We're going to have to try and defend the inside from the Alfa Romeo as we head down in towards the final few corners of this Grand Prix there. And you know what? You might try and hook it up around the outside. No chance there. We'll slam the door through the corner and... Well, P12 is going to be our best result of the year so far. We are constantly learning, constantly improving, and getting better in this car. Points are a matter of when rather than if. Absolutely at the moment. At the final corner, it's P12 here in Albert Park. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. It's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Oh, what a race. At the end of the day, it is all about raw pace. And our winner had it in spades today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Natalie Pinkham, come on, who do you pick? Often, my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. No change at the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, I'm not quite sure how that's fair. Max Verstappen second to third in the GP. A botched two stops trashy, yes, but we went from 20th to 12th in the probably worst car still on the grid, and apparently that's not good enough for driver of the day there. Charles Leclerc takes home the dub, bringing home a Red Bull double podium. Sights down in P4 there, ahead of both Mercedes and Lando Norris. A fantastic effort by him in that McLaren car to beat out Ocon, Alonso, and Pierre Gasly to the final top 10. But every race we're doing at the moment is just one better uh, than the one before that, so it is a matter of when rather than if we're going to take our first points of the campaign there. Gap at the top now opens up to nine points for Verstappen. Now a they have nine points ahead of both Ferrari cars, and that means the Constructors is going to be down to one point if my mental maths hasn't failed me there. In terms of the no-point scorers, we're all the way up to P16 now in the championship, so by virtue of count back, we are slowly but surely getting there, and I think that now also with that result will bump us up ahead of Williams. Yep, 
my maths hasn't failed me. One point now, the gap between Red Bull and Ferrari at the top. We are now ahead of Williams as well in the Constructors' Championship. So hopefully we can try and score our first points very, very soon. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back when Formula 1 returns later today to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. You do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.